Well, I had already been primed by Vishnu Jan Maharaj, and a few other joys had preached to me really beautifully, and so I kind of knew already I was going to join, but I had only been there two days. And then um, Srila Prabhupada arrived, and uh, it, it was just splendor on all levels, you know. I, when I saw him, I just cried, and uh, he was the most beautiful person I had ever seen. And I knew immediately that he was my spiritual master. Well, we went to Hawaii uh, to train up some of the book distributors. Uh, at that time, we had figured out how to um, sell books in many, many languages and international people. And so it was very exciting because we were able to distribute books to countries that nobody could go to. And Srila Prabhupada uh, heard about this, and he was excited about it. And uh, while I was in Hawaii, I used to go to the airport every day wearing a sari and tilak. And one day I was coming home from the airport, and I was walking across the lawn, and Prabhupada was up on the balcony of his room, and he saw me. And uh, so then he called over Upendra, who was acting as his servant at that time, and he said, So she is coming from preaching? And he said, Yes, Prabhupada, I think she's coming. I said, I, I would like to speak with her. Would she like to come up? So Upendra, who was my friend, he ran down the stairs and he goes, Mola, Prabhupada's asking if you'd like to talk to him in his room right now. Well, my hair was standing in all directions. I had had a long day at the airport. And uh, I was very nervous, but I went up the stairs and I didn't know what to expect. And Prabhupada was sitting there alone in his room at that desk that's still there now. And he first I paid my obeisances and I sat kind of near the back and and Prabhupada kept motioning for me to come closer and closer. And so finally I was scooted up quite close to where he was, just next to his desk on the floor. And Prabhupada said, So, tell me about the preaching. Tell me about Sankirtan. How is it going? And so I started to talk a little bit. First I was very nervous. I was choking. And I just said, Well, Srila Prabhupada, uh, people are taking your books. They, they like your books. He goes, yes, they are liking? I said, yes, Srila Prabhupada. And not only people in America, but people from all over the world. He goes, well, tell me, what kind of people? What kind of people did you distribute to today? So I said, well, I was straining my brain. Uh, teachers and students and lawyers and mothers and old people, just every kind of person. And he said, more? More people? So I was like trying to think of more people. And, and he was leaning over. He was very excited to hear. And he said, uh, and what are they saying? I said, well, they, they say that they're interested in this kind of knowledge. He goes, well, what do you say? And I said, well, I uh, say that, you know, it's transcendental knowledge. You can't find it in any other book. It's very, uh, it, will, it will make you happy. Uh, it's about God. And about love of God like that. And he said, yes, this is very nice. He says, I, I know what I want you to say. And so he called for his servant. And the servant came and he asked him to bring Bhagavatam 1-1. One, one. And then he pulled open to it almost immediately, just knew exactly where it was. And he opened it up and he opened up to that verse that says, this Bhagavat Purana is as brilliant as the sun. And it disappeared uh, just after the departure of Lord Sri Krishna, accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc., Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness in this age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. And he said, see how beautifully Srimad Bhagavatam sells itself. He says, anyone who heard this from Srimad Bhagavatam itself, they would think, I must read that book, I must. He said, so that's what you can need to tell the people. You just tell them straight from Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, I, have, I am very excited myself when I read this Srimad Bhagavatam, so certainly they will be as well. So then he said, um, and what countries are you distributing to? So I started listing all the countries I could possibly think of that we had ever distributed a book to. And he was saying, more, more, more. And, uh, and I told the story already about going across the Iron Curtain. I remember telling that. And... Uh, and then he was just saying, he goes, I am sitting here in my room, and I am absorbed in writing these literatures. And um, 
He goes, and I am thinking all the time while I am writing these literatures how they are being received by the public. He said, this book distribution, it, it's not just book distribution, but it's also popularization of this transcendental knowledge. He goes, so I want it to be popularized everywhere, and I want it to be distributed very nicely so people will appreciate. So while we were talking, uh, Prabhupada was like, it was a quite a question and answer kind of thing, and I was very young in those days and very enthusiastic, and my technique for distributing books was that if people would talk, sometimes I would interrupt them. So Srila Prabhupada was kind of talking, and then at one point he was asking me some question, and he kind of leaned back. He was, he was dressed, he had no shirt on, he just had his, his uh, cloth on, and it was a sunny, beautiful day, and he was so beautiful, and he was sitting like this, very sweetly and very ecstatically, just leaning back, and then he'd lean forward, and his eyes would get really big, and he would ask these questions. So at one point, he leaned back, I think he was thinking, and he started a question, and I just interrupted him and, and finished the question for him. And um, just at that moment, there was one sannyasi who was one of his servants who just happened to be walking by, and he heard me do it. And he went, <clears throat> like, and I... <laughs> I thought, oh no, I was so embarrassed. And, and I closed my mouth and I just kind of looked at Prabhupada. And then, but Prabhupada was just kind of like finished the sentence again and, and, you know, clarified it. And so then we were talking more back and forth. And he was telling me all these sweet stories about uh, salesmanship and about women and about uh, preaching and just very beautiful, sweet things and a few things about himself when he was preaching. And uh, then he, uh, he started to say some comment, and it was a very deep comment. And he started, and he just hesitated for a second, and I just interrupted again. And, and this time I was, I was really wrong, too. I interrupted, and I said something that wasn't what he wanted. So he kind of went, like, kind of shocked, because it wasn't what he was going to say. And then again, that sannyasi was somehow in the room, and he just went like... <clears throat> Like, kind of like, and he, he was furious with me, and so I, um, I didn't know what to do. I, I felt so mortified, and I, I was so uh, fallen, and I put my head down, and I kind of was like in a midst of, like a mortified kind of head down, and a, trying to make an obeisance, and then trying to figure out how I could get out of the room backwards, <laughs> because I, I thought my spiritual life was finished, and... Um, so I was kind of figuring out, but I couldn't figure out any decent way to get out of the room because it was quite a long ways and I didn't know if I could see behind me. And, and it was very quiet and there was no sound, not anything. And then I just felt something and, and so I kind of, I was down on the ground like this and Prophet was sitting right on his desk and I, I kind of peeked up and I opened up one eye and Srila Prophet had bent over like this on his elbows and he had bent way over on his desk, and he was leaning forward practically right next to me. And he was just smiling very beautifully with so much love, and just looking at me with so much love. And, and I, I kind of didn't say anything. And then Prabhupada said to the servant, who was also standing there, he said, Just see, she is so enthusiastic. <laughs> so that was a great, enormous delivery of mercy which I shall never, ever forget.